Um, but once again, welcome um, to the fourth Solidarity Art event. Um, and as I mentioned previously, for those of you who are joining us, um, I want to thank the US Embassy in Poland for making this project possible, for bringing both Poles and Americans and artists residing in those countries um, in the US and Poland to discuss their work, um, to have cross-cultural exchange and dialogue during these challenging pandemic times. Um, so as I introduced myself earlier, um, my name is Joanna Pottle. I'm the director and the facilitator of the project. Um, I am a visual artist, but I also am an educator, researcher, um, project manager, if you will, and curator. Um, I was doing a Fulbright here in Krakow um, where I'm currently based in 2019, 2020 which in hindsight was not probably the best year to do that because of the pandemic situation. Um, but it worked out pretty well, all things considering. Um, I'm really grateful I was able to remain in Poland and I'm now pursuing graduate studies at the Jagiellonian University, as well as conducting this project. Um, so thank you all once again for being here. Um, we have um, Alexandria Bowasek um, and Bogdan Ahimescu, um, who are our Polish artist, um, guest artists today, who will be speaking with us. Um, I'm going to first introduce, um, also, um, we have Jack Holloway, who's our US-based curatorial assistant based in Brooklyn, New York. And um, Julia Les, who's our curatorial assistant in Poland, based in Krakow, um, with me and many of our other um, artists um, throughout the project. Um, but I'll first go ahead and introduce um, Alexandra. Um, she is a interdisciplinary artist um, from Poland and she has quite the impressive repertoire. So I'll just mention some of the many accomplishments that she has. Um, she received an MA in media arts in 2011 art education in 2015 um, in Wrocław at the Academy of Art and Design. Um, during her studies, she did many different exchange um, programs, um, including in Strasbourg, France, in the Maryland Institute College of Art in Baltimore in the US. And she's the co-founder of Fondatio Art House and an artist run space called um, Forma Otwarta, if I'm pronouncing that properly with the Polish name. Um, and she's worked very collaboratively, participating in many exhibitions and various festivals, biennials, and art residencies um, in many different countries, um, such as RAT in Mexico City, Mexico. Um, she's also done different residencies in the US, such as um, Elsewhere Museum in Greensboro, USA, um, Santa Monica, USA, in the Czech Republic. Um, in Los Angeles, in Japan, in Congo, um, and she's from an artistic family. And she describes her childhood as a great social experience in the open air, um, and every story being transformed into an image. And her work centers around identity, uh, memory, history, and the meaning of a, of a place and space, as well as language. Um, and she talks about being a foreigner as really a big source of great inspiration um, and celebrating mobility as a way of living. Um, so without further ado, I wanna pass the virtual floor um, and get started with our first artist talk. So as you are ready, um, Alexandra, I'm passing the mic over to you. Um, and I know, apologies if we have some um, technical slowness today. Um, I know due to different weather circumstances, we might have a little bit of a lag here, um, but we're looking forward to um, pushing through um, with all those. Um, I think we are waiting for Alexandria to reconnect. I think she's had some internet issues. Um, but no worries on that. Um, I'll actually give a brief, um, in case people are not as familiar with Zoom, I'll just briefly tell you about a couple of important icons. Um, we would love for you to interact throughout the um, whole event. Um, you can use reactions, which is at the bottom of the screen, and you can include different emojis, clapping hands, thumbs up. 
Um, so you can let us know what you're thinking throughout the event. Um, you can also use the raise hand function, which is part of the reactions. If you'd like to ask a question at any point, um, please do raise your virtual hand and we'll make sure to get to your question as soon as possible. You're also welcome to type anything in the chat as well. But I see Alexandria has um, rejoined us. So Alexandria, I've um, introduced you and I'm passing the virtual floor to you whenever you are ready. Um, but if you need a moment, um, technology wise, um, that's also okay too. Um, in the meantime, um, if you're new with us today, um, I would invite you to fill out a brief survey if you would like to hear more about this event, um, the recording and future events, as well as past events. You're welcome to subscribe to get monthly, to get the announcements about the monthly events. Um, and we also have an Instagram page, so you're welcome to follow that as well. And we will be posting all the recordings on our YouTube page. So you can also check out past recordings, this recording and future ones there as well. I was wondering while we're waiting for Alexandra to, <coughs> to, 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 to connect her screen, like I know you've probably said this a million times, but can you, can you tell a few words about the Solidarity Project? And also, you know, one thing that I, I would be, I, I hope you're hearing me because the, the yeah. rain mm -hmm. against my, my uh, uh, windows here, but um, I'm actually curious, how do you see your time in Poland? I mean, it's mm -hmm. gotta be so strange. You, you, yeah. you came just to be like, contained <laughs> yeah yeah i think um to answer first the first part which is connected to the second question you have um the solid solidarity project really came from a desire for me of reconnecting with creative communities both in poland and the us um because starting march 2020 um my fulbright grant was suspended um until further notice and um, I had already gotten extensions, so my whole 2020 had been lined up, and I was so excited to have all Why these different things suspended? lined up. Did say something wrong? Sorry? Why was it suspended? Because, because of the pandemic, um, the State Department would not be able to like guarantee everyone's safety, and it changed all of the circumstances of doing an international exchange. Um, so I was kind of at that moment where they were sending so many updates from the embassy about um, whether you, if you're gonna stay, you're on your own and we encourage you to go stateside. But, so this project really was inspired by me wanting, oh, and Alexandria is here. So I'll just finish that real quick. It was inspired by wanting to reconnect to the creative communities, um, which was a struggle for me during the pandemic. Um, and thankfully the embassy had an open call for grant projects, so. That's sort of in a nutshell, but I might elaborate more later. But while we have Alexandria, um, I'm gonna pass the floor to you. Um, as you're ready, you can go ahead with your artist talk. I've introduced you, so we're ready when you are. Hi, um, sorry again for my um, connecting problems. I had to do, um, do a quick uh, reconnecting with the cable. Now I think it's gonna work. I hope you hear me. Hear me. Okay. Yeah, the connection is much better, so I think we'll be good to go. We had to do a little rearrangement here. Anyways, um, thank you so much for inviting me um, for the project. Um, I'm super happy to be here. And I think you did also a great intro already, so I don't really have to introduce myself that much, which is also great. <laughs> um, but maybe I'm, I'm just gonna say a couple words that I usually work with. Um, um identity belonging um history telling and um i'm also interested in space place dichotomy which i think is going to be visible in that presentation and um yeah i mean i i i um explore variety of mediums depending on on a context and on a situation let me share my screen and um Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, 
So I'm gonna actually go straight to the first work. Mm. Let's rearrange this space a little bit more. Okay. Um, so I'm starting with the work that's called um, Universal Structure to Perform the Ceremony. And um, that was actually my, my graduate work and kind of like a rite of a passage at the same time because um, I decided to create um, um, site-specific installation, participatory installation. Here's a little explanation on the left side. It's a floor plan of a gallery. So you can see um, first room with the entrance and the second room with the actual installation, which is here on the picture on the right side. Um, um, so um, I decided to create that installation uh, because I thought that would be a good answer to the um, established procedure of the MA defense at the university or academy um, in, a, you know, I'm, I'm not sure how it looks in different countries, but in Poland, we have um, quite of a structure which involves certain amount of people, jury, and, you know, it's very kind of like black and white um, where one person um, basically gives a monologue and all the other people just see it, answer a question and so on. So I decided to make, make us all a little bit more equal um, by um, symbolically reducing um, our bodies to heads, um, talking heads, if you wish. Um, uh, yeah, so um, through that structure, here you can see the first room because the, 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 uh, the crowd was actually divided. So the first room was the audience and the second room was actually where the actual defense happened. Um, um, and it was streamed live to the first room. So it was kind of like recreating that situation work with that space being um, in a digital um, situation, but also in a physical one. Um, yes. Um, and I really, I thought it was really um, about experiencing that moment. This is actual, you know, those are my, a lot of those people who are here on the screen, which are from a second room, those are, um, most of them are my professors and teachers from school. So that, that was also kind of like a very, um, yeah, I think it was like a very um, symbolic image and, 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 and um, that threshold, the end of the school, the end of, one part. Okay, well, moving from the indoors to the outdoors, um, here's a, um, this is a work called Picnic, which I made in collaboration with Olivia Beszczynska. As you can see, it's basically like an uh, enlarged um, picnic blanket that we decided to do. Um, that was an installation made for the survival and art review that is organized in Wrocław every year. It's usually organized in a city space or in an abandoned building, something characteristic, or as it was back then, um, in a park. And Topa Park, which you can see on a picture, at least fragments of it, um, is basically like in a, in a city center in a district called Obin. And what we wanted to do as, um, you know, the, also the slogan of that edition was when a park becomes an arena. So we were thinking how people use the park and how park is a public garden, city garden, and how it becomes like a living room. So the idea was to um, restore those like original functions of it. And um, yeah, and give it back to the people and maybe um, revitalize a little bit that idea of social meeting in a nature. And um, we really didn't know that the project is going to be, honestly, is going to go so viral because the second day when we set it up there on a little hill, people totally owned it. Like it didn't belong to us anymore. What happened next, it was, I was just observing what's, what's going on in that, you know, in that place is that the family would come over with the kids and the kids would play in the middle and the, fam and the parents, um, we just sit on the edges and really, really quickly, um, all those new owners of that installation also made rules for it. So for example, you were not allowed to enter with shoes and they were really watching for that. And like, 
making sure that all the other people who are coming or all the other, I don't know, newcomers know that role. Um, so that was, that was something that um, I think is also very important in my practice is like, you know, where you come from an idea to the actual action and when something that you started is not yours anymore, but it really belongs to someone else and, and people really can explore it in variety of, a variety of ways. Okay, so now I'm going to um, move to another um, community involved project, which was called Mad Maps Matsudo. Um, it was, um, as I mentioned, a community based project. It was realized during the Paradise Air um, in Matsudo, which is um, a little city um, close to Tokyo. And so for many people, it's basically just like a bedroom city. Um, and so during my stay, I, I decided to meet the neighbors. I decided to roam around. I decided to, um, I don't know, start a conversations with them. And so um, along with a great um, interpreter, Kanoko Tamura, we, um, I made a list of people also from recommendations and we would start talking to them. Um, she would help me ask some questions. I would translate some basic things. Um, and later on, um, um, all those interviews during which I, I would also take a couple pictures just as a little souvenir or a memory of that moment um, ended up being on a website which you can see on the left side. Um, but what, what was really important in that project was actually the meeting itself um, because um people really um i felt like people really have a different they don't have so many borders when they talk to strangers and being a stranger is usually um at least in my practice based on my experience is usually something that opens many doors because it's something if you talk to people they start sharing um many different stories that no one else ever heard um, for a variety of reasons. And what you can see right now on a slide is, for example, um, from one of those talks that was with Kaki and um, a young guy whose um, grandfather died, um, I don't know, a couple of years before. And he told me that um, he would like to show me an album, which you can also see here on the, on the right side. And um, that album was mostly with the pictures he took um, during the war escapades because he um, he was an engineer and he was building bridges during the second World war and what we found in that album was also this little booklet that is open here on the right slide and it was actually a soldier's guide to live on an occupied land which you know is something very unexpected and um, to be found in the middle of like very you know almost random conversation is like a big discovery. So from a meeting like this, when you, you know, you have some family pictures then some pictures from a travels, then think, then, you know, guide like that, that, that the man just pasted in an album and, and his grandchild took almost from a trash because the family was just cleaning the house. That was like a little surprising discovery and I mean it's, it's also very interesting I'm not really going to go deep inside the booklet here on the left side there's a little translation of that and how it is explained you know what you need uh, to be a soldier in an occupy land um yeah okay um so to change a little bit there's this is another person I talked to it's a man with a goldfishes and calendars and he just explained me he didn't he wasn't really that involved in you know storytelling or being super open about things but he just had really clear stories and short ones like you know I got those goldfishes um because um I got them on the right time it was 2015 and he told me they're gonna buy they're gonna die by 2021 or 2020 for the Tokyo Olympics and this is how I'm gonna also count the time. 
So he was totally obsessed about the time, not only calendars, but also the lifespan of a goldfish was like kind of a measure he would take. This is a picture from a lesson of, on a traditional um, Japanese instrument called koto. This is an interior picture from one of the interviewees. This is from Uesugi san house, um, who sent me also a little note. I sometimes usually, I also ask people we would exchange mails or messages and write to each other. And he just wrote something like, I'm a t-shirt designer. My small tropical fishes make small society. I like to watch them. The man from the poster is an invention king, Thomas Edison. It is a campaign that Apple had made in 1997 called Think Different. He's in the bathroom with Krecik, Czech cartoon hero. So basically going through all of those encounters here, um, teenagers who took me to their favorite place, which was that um, booth that would, you know, take a picture of you and automatically enlarge your eyes. This is from like a kindergarten walks with kids who just totally created their own landscape, inventing some monster, areas and I don't know, in imaginary stories. Um, and as I mentioned at the very beginning, um, the end of the project, um, well, the, you know, physical end of the project was actually a produce, production of those postcards that people could later on send from Matsudo with greetings. And you could scan that QR code and by scanning the QR code, you would see the website on which you could also read all the stories. Um, you know, you can even find your, probably your neighbor if you're from there. Um, and, and that way maybe even meet that person a little bit better. But basically I think that project um, made me think about art as um, you know, that the act of art is also, is also a sense of trust that we build together. And um, okay, here's another project um, that's also in collaboration with people. I choose um, those socially involved um, projects in purpose because I thought they maybe serve our um, today's meeting well. This project's called Only Traces and um, it was a street happening um, resulting in an art book and the project made in collaboration with Sam Stevens um, during our art residency in, um, Mexico City. Um, and basically the project was based on a common form on, of like a street stand. Mexican, street, Mexican streets are just full of vendors and people interacting with them. So when we started thinking, um, how can we interact with people? That was just immediate. We need a stand, we need a stand, we need to be on a street, we need to, this is the way you're actually gonna be able to, to talk to them. Here you can see, um, pictures of the table we found and, and restore a little bit. And we would just move with that table. Here's on the left side, Sam in a Mexican subway with that table. Um, but so what we did was actually, um, we would stand in a different locations in one neighborhood for a couple of days. And um, I would, you know, stop some people and ask them for basic items they carry with them or they have in their pockets and they think they're important or they are you know, meaningful or they remind them or, of something or someone. And then we would just, um, some would draw an outline of that object, which you can actually see here. This is a guy who's, um, who does um, shoe polishing. And so he just basically held us that, um, hand us that um, wooden box and said, you know, this is my tool. This is my daily, um, this is my job. This is the tool I use in, at my work. Here are some results of that project. Um, little outlines um, with a note. Um, let me, okay. With some notes that we were making actually on a spot, but later on we also translated them in a book into languages and so on and turned them into little stories. Um, so we get stories from very basic ones like, you know, somebody's holding us a pen saying, this pen needs to be repaired or someone holding us a keychain, um, heart-shaped heart -shaped keychain, saying that um, 
you know, it was a mother and a daughter and the daughter with the mother were always together and the mother was really sick. So she always need that little box with her medicine. And, and she said something that um, the, the, the illness, the, sick, the sickness she has usually attacks her um, when she's not happy. It, it's the, the hardest. When she's not happy, the sickness is in its, you know, most, more, most um, intense um, way. Okay, so we took, we scanned all those drawings and we made a little, um, basically just three editions of the book, which you can see on the pictures. Only Traces, a book of patterns. This is an explanation. This is just a drawing of the neighborhood we were working in. We wrote um, short text explaining it and um, we added all the drawings from all those people we met during those couple of days on the street. Now I'm gonna to move to a project that's called, this is actually an exhibition view at um, Entropia Gallery in Wrocław. This is also in collaboration with Sam Stevens as we were um, traveling quite a lot together. So we did share a lot of experiences and um, we worked together with um, various people on locations. The title of this exhibition um, was uh, Biuro Rzeczy Znalezionych, which means lost and found in English, but literally it could be translated as an office of found things. And as you can see, this is already like, a, this is um, something that is gonna open another phase in, in my um, working practice, but I think it's also important for Sam, um, working with people um, through objects. So what is displayed here on a picture is the, those are the items we collected during the travels with little tags that were stories told by people. Um, real short stories of those items. Um, and I'm maybe gonna also read one. For example, here on the right side, you have a box of that Paradise Mini is a box, is a cigarette box, cigarillos. Um, and it's from Edja. And the story goes, Edja smokes even when she eats. Cigarette ash falls on the table in her Parisian kitchen. She tells me a story about how she left Poland for Israel how she lived in kibbutz and how at age of 18, she ran away with an older Frenchman. Today, she opened this blue can of Paradise Mini because her favorite cigarillos, Café Crème, were sold out. So this is just one of the many stories which led me and Sam to start another project called Mobile Museum. On the left side, you can see a poster designed by Anja Wacławek. In the middle, you can see a little mobile machine that we were also using on the streets, but not only this one, I'm gonna show you in a second what else we were using. And on the right side, there's a couple items we collected. Um, so we started with the items from the travels, but we, as the project was actually held in Wrocław, um, we were gathering um, souvenirs from, um, from mostly um, the citizens of the city. Um, the idea of Mobile Museum is that it's a platform to show the uh, potential of narration, of narrative, um, because we believe that um, everything, each, each of those things are infused with like a sentimental value. And um, that is very important. And that should be the true souvenir from a place that you take, that you don't take some kind of, you know, plastic keychains or something like that, but maybe you would like to be engaged a little bit more in this like um, historical landscape that um, those little um, objects can provide you with. So the whole initiative, here are also a couple, um, stories this is all published on the website we made for um for that project and this actually also shows what was exchanged for what so for example you have turkish dish here here you have a silver spoon from childhood and and the silver spoon was traded for the turkish dish here you have a cosplay switch that almost burned down the house of the owner's parents that was switched for a um Tibetan prayer beads, mala, which carry 
those beats are carrying really a huge and powerful love story, switched again for fish glass and so on. So this project is basically never ending. I'm gonna also show you a couple shots from different locations. So this is like a basic set, we thought, for, um, for item exchange, which is a flea market. In Wrocław, there are two big flea markets. This is one of them, people sit on the rails, and this is just the classic Sunday activity. So we decided to go there and explore that landscape and also kind of work on, on, you know, work, set it up the similar way as the other people do. So on the ground. ground. Okay, this is the view of some items. We did print out the stories we got from people with their names. And we were also, you know, explaining it and introducing it to people. Here you have a couple pictures from different locations, not only from flea market, but also from like, um, cultural houses from the streets um, where we would have a table or where we would just sit and chat with people and then hand them the items and then talk about their what they are bringing. And here is a shot from like, um, we did somewhat of like a final presentation at Bevoa Design in Wrocław. But honestly saying final is not a good word because this project, I feel like it's never ending because you know, you can recycle the items forever. Okay, so you have Bevoa people looking at the items at our mobile stand and on the right side, me um, on the street interacting with, with, with a man um, who exchanged um, his very personal item with us. And um, yeah, so I was thinking about this idea of keeping archives and, you know, um, thinking of the dates of our lives or how are we um, corresponding with, with all those collections. And, and, and I just realized that I've been always collecting scraps and notes and, and drawings. And that also led me to, um, I'm, con I'm, con I'm kind of gonna circle back because that's gonna lead to a, a project that I started in 2009 and it's called Travel Diaries. Basically, the idea is very simple. I reuse books that I find on the spot and I glue receipts inside. So I have been collecting receipts from travels and um, basically every stay in a different country done my motherland since, as I mentioned, 2009. So on the left side, you can see um, reused English teaching um, book called English from, and, and that book actually, um, I used that book to show um, receipts from Mexico, from ver variety of places. Right side is an album of Raphael paintings, which actually contains receipts from mostly United States. And here you can see the inside. Um, um, and, you know, I've been collecting those travel, I mean, I treat those as a travel data, cash receipts, means of living. I think it's like the best proof of um, existence in our capitalist world. Um, it's just that, you know, the way you spend money also uh, becomes the story of your trip and, 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 you know, I also think that everything, the proof of your existence basically can be captured in numbers. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna end here. Awesome, um, Dziękuję bardzo, thank you so much. Um, that was so fascinating and I, I already have so many questions. Um, so thank you once again. Um, does anyone um, initially have any comments or questions? Um, I know I have a lot and I'm happy to monitor any thoughts or questions from our attendees here. Um, but I'll go ahead and kind of start with an initial question, um, which is, looking at all these different projects that you've done throughout different years, different countries. Um, I'm really curious to see or to hear from you if there is sort of what you would see as a common thread throughout the entirety of your work as you play with different media, different site-specific work, um, interactive, collaborative or not. 
many of which we see are, but um, from your whole portfolio, I know that you vary between um, different levels of collaboration. So how would you say if there's any sort of common thread within all of your work, what would that maybe be or how would you put that? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm very interested in something I would call geobiography. Like I'm, I'm very interested in observing, observing people and like thinking how the landscapes, how the countries are coming from really shape their identity. I mean, it's not, it's not the whole thing that shapes, you know, individuals, but I think there's like a big, big part of it and we carry a lot that we take from the culture and from the language we use. So I think honestly, also being a stranger is really, I think I mentioned that also, it's kind of like a methodology because you know, when people hear that you speak with a different accent, that's already something that can strike an interesting conversation or could be a starting point. So you already have something to, to build on and, and like departure, departure from. Um, but talking about, okay, biography and like personal stories, you know, I'm also very curious, and I think we talked about that a little bit before, about the notions of, um, you know, how we divide um, our environment and our landscape. We were talking about, you know, the so-called global north and global south, me coming from... A, a place that I can't really locate in any of those notions. I feel like I'm coming from the gap. So this is also kind of like, I think to me, searching for the roots is something very like fundamental in a way that we all want to know. But at the same time, it's something, you know, also looking at European map is something that like, the borders were switching so frequently and people would not even know at some times if they belonged to this place or that place or another place. They, they only, they knew they, they had set of like cultural, I don't know, they, they had some traditions and they would believe in certain things. But um, this whole aspect of belong to a, belonging to a country or to certain language, this is something that really fascinates me. That is really fascinating. Thank you. Yeah, there's so there's so much that you know. I would love to elaborate on. Um, I think there's sort of this stereotype that artists tend to feel like they're misunderstood, or there's this sort of individuality within a collective sort of artistic community or the art world. Um, so I think the idea of home is really interesting, or if artists ever really feel at home or where they do feel most at home. Um, in a lot of ways, we, we do feel like we move between that insider outsider perspective or within and still without in a lot of ways, especially as an artist who's transnational, who's working in all these different contexts. Um, how do you manage to find the balance as a foreigner entering a new different space of being sensitive to this new environment while still sort of facilitating your own work, your own perspective and context um, and engaging with them? How do you find that balance? Wow, that's a difficult question. I think it also really depends on, on a place because, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm saying you, if you have a different um, accent and people hear it, then they ask, but sometimes they, with your accent, there's a set of, um, stereotypes that are connected with so it really depends where you are and if you have to deal with the stereotypes or not and then that's how you start so for example in latin america when we were traveling in mexico and i would tell people you know i'm from poland they'll be like oh poland like they they were not even sure okay pope poland is equal pope to them but there's not much imagination like where's exactly poland or you know what's happening there, um, whether, for example, if I'm in, in Germany or in some other Western European countries, Poland would be the place of immigrants who come to be a plumbers or cleaners. So it already puts you in a certain hierarchy. Somehow, maybe subconsciously, you know, some people would actually ap apply those stereotypes. So this is always this really depends and, and it's hard to say if there's a general rule, it just really depends on who you are talking with and how, how, in which situation, which context. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, we also have a question from our fellow guest artist, um, Bogdan. Um, I'm happy to read out your question or if you would like to ask it um, as you would prefer. I, I, I do have a voice and perhaps I can I can say it better. I'm actually, well, as it might become obvious later, I'm interested in this idea of, of micro history and and uh, the, the narratives behind your pieces are i think very interesting and i was wondering like what what forms do you think your art is going to morph into in in the future because it, it it would and if you could comment like um uh, on 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 uh, on perhaps on plans vis-a-vis uh, -vis of this of uh, of of this contrast between art as form and art as as uh, narrative yeah it's it, i was actually thinking about that it's a, it's a difficult one because as um yeah to me there is a lot about that encounter which might not be very visible maybe to people sometimes when you finish when i finish a project what happened between me and those people might not be easily accessible to the others so I think there are certain artifacts that I'm interested in that I can reuse. Like, you know, when I'm talking about those projects that are memory based and souvenir based, there's certain souvenirs that people bring and they're very like, some of them are more, some of them are less personal, broken. But I can give you an example of something that I didn't present here, but I was also working with souvenirs in totally different surrounding. Um, I was given a space for one of the art residencies that was actually, um, in my opinion, too big for me, myself. And there was also a spare bedroom. So, you know, my thinking as a traveler was like, there's a spare bedroom, there should be some people staying in the spare bedroom. But then again, I created a project out of that and um, I would invite strangers, they would visit me and something again happened between us. Then I would ask them, could you please leave me something that would remind me of you? Don't buy anything, just give me something from your pocket. So people were leaving all sorts of stuff and I would actually, just to have a memory of them also draw, I was taking pictures of their palms and I, I made little drawings of the lines of their palms that I treated as the, you know, as um, a portrait because I didn't want to go into this classic idea of portraits. So the lines as a portrait a landscape. So I had those, those portraits I had those souvenirs and and then I thought okay but those souvenirs you know if you don't tell the story and if you don't meet the people and it was a little bit different that the whole space was kind of site specific happening then if I make a show at the end it just doesn't make sense so I decided to do something that I think some of those people didn't like I destroyed all the souvenirs because most of them were actually paper based so I destroy them in order to merge them all together and like turn them into paper sheets. So I think, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm really answering your question, but there are some, some ways I think that I would work on based on what I can gather from people or based where, on what I can see. Or sometimes there would be another collaboration drawn from because for example, you know, when I was hosting those people there, was a composer from Mexico who came, that was in Los Angeles, and he came specifically for his job. And, and we didn't know each other and I hosted him for a couple of days and he left me notes and he was like experimental musician. So his notes, I looked at his notes and I was like, this is like a drawing. Can you make a music to my drawing? And he said, yes, with pleasure. And that's how another collaboration started. He made the music to the drawing. And this, I think this is always layered like a chain reaction. And I think this is a little bit the direction I would go towards, but I'm also very interested in bookmaking and, and book creating. So I think maybe that's gonna be my future direction as well. Oh, that's really interesting. And actually, in fact, I invite you to go back. We have, our last event was about bookmaking um, as, as well as more broadly speaking, um, sort of, combining text with um, images and with sort of visual art and text-based art zines and, and the like. So that was with um, Alex and Brandon. So if you are interested in that, you're welcome to go back to our YouTube channel and watch that. Um, but I have sort of a follow-up question with some of those ideas. Um, and kind of going back to a lot of your work that's in public space, 
And you talked about the idea of giving public space back to the people and that people just kind of take it over and kind of become the owners of that space and sort of dictate it. Um, and I think this last year has really challenged our notions of belonging in public space and who really owns it or who should own it, um, who belongs there, uh, whether that be in Poland with different movements in the US, all over the world. Um, so I guess to summarize into a question is how do you think as individual artists, you specifically, or more broadly speaking, um, the artistic community, what is our role and our responsibility in facilitating that negotiation of public space and who it belongs to, or how can we participate um, in a meaningful, sensitive, but active way? And how do you do that through your work? Um, I think I'm just gonna answer this question short, short, because I honestly believe um, that the public space is our living room. Honestly, the city um, offers so much. And, you know, for some people, this is a house, this is a home. And I think people should really take a bigger ownership of the public space and really think of it as, 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 as a place that belongs to them. It's actually a play, becoming a place, not just this like unknown space. This is something that we should think of. And I feel like in Poland, a lot of people, this is, this is an interesting idea because it's distance for a lot of people. We like to fence our houses. We like to keep, you know, keep the, the inside clean and nice, but what is happening outside, we care a little bit less about. And I think this is totally opposite from, from my approach. I think I, you know, public space is the, the space we can, we can totally meet and talk and, and, and use the way we need to use it you know it's just it's not just a trajectory to get from point a to point b that was beautifully said um thank you i know i asked kind of a long-winded question there and you succinctly answered it so beautifully um i know we're kind of getting to the end of this section of the event um so sort of a concluding question would be Pretty broadly speaking, um, I'd love to hear about how your artistic practice has been affected within the last year and a half-ish um, with the pandemic, uh, or has it impacted your practice and how, um, especially as an artist who speaks so bo boldly about being sort of mobile and mobility and traveling being such a strong part of your practice. Um, and then how do you see it kind of going into the future as we're sort of slowly moving out of the pandemic? Right, well, I think because of that pandemic, we're now meeting on Zoom. So this is one of the you know, results of this that we all got kind of um, used to be in that crazy digital box. But I think I was kind of lucky to be honest with you during the pandemic because it was the time when we finished some projects so there was a lot of post-production there was a lot of rewriting writing a lot of that kind of like solidary work that you need to spend editing the text putting the pictures together we also started a new um space by we i mean um sam stevens and me as we run art house foundation so there was a lot of structuralizing behind this and we just opened a space in January which at the beginning was a little bit difficult January this year because that was still um, during the lockdown and then we just quickly also realized that the space that is not a gallery is not a shop it, the, the space that doesn't is not described you know in one exact definition is impossible to be closed in a way in other words it just it just you know, it's like sleeping through all those definitions. So we kind of were trying to work out certain ways to still be able to meet with people outside, inside, limitate that, but kind of um, establish that space and also get ready for the months that will come. And um, and we would know that there will be more people interested in. And, you know, by, by saying that we started it, it's actually, it, it means that we actually got a, um, physical a place that we could use and that's on a main square in Oleśnica which is which is really interesting and it's with a shopping window so we use that shopping window as kind of um, a hyperlink to communicate with some of the you know people passing by too oh wow that's really interesting um thank you for your answer um 
I'll kind of wrap up our Q and A, um, but in case anyone does have any final questions or comments, um, please feel free to share those now. Um, but I kind of want to finish with um, a quote I wrote down that you said that I thought was just so brilliant um, and something that I hope we can take into the future, um, which is the act of art is a sense of trust we build together. Um, and I think that it just, it's so telling after a year of being, you know, there's so much ambiguity of who we can see in proximity, um, in person versus virtual, um, as well as just the polarization and the division that we've had um, politically and otherwise and renegotiating um, history and memory um, in both Poland and the US and all over the world. Um, so I just think that it's such a beautiful thought to have as we kind of move forward into the future and how does art kind of create that safe space to build trust once again and to build bridges and to have civil discourse. Um, and your work does that so beautifully um, through storytelling and through sort of local and collective action. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, if you have any final thoughts or comments um, with your artist talk, um, feel free. Um, otherwise, I think we'll take our five minute break now. Um, so nobody go away. We're just gonna take a quick um, restroom, coffee break. Um, so meet us back here in about five minutes. Um, we're at 3.57 in Poland. So it looks like probably uh, 9.57 in the US. So let's come back two minutes after the hour. Um, but without further ado, thank you so much again um, for your wonderful artist talk. Um, and we'll hear from Bogdan next. So again, don't go away. And we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. See you. See you. Thank you.
Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to slowly welcome us back um, after our quick um, break here. I hope you're able to grab um, a coffee or some water um, and are ready to jump back in with us. Um, as we're slowly kind of tapping back into our meeting, um, I just want to thank um, one of our guest speakers who just was with us. Uh, Alexandra um, for a wonderful artist talk and subsequent discussion. Um, I've included her info in the chat, so please check out her website, um, her work via Instagram, and you can follow her on Facebook as well. Um, and as you all are aware, um, we are indeed recording the event, so all of this will be available um, on our YouTube channel which um, I believe I've put in the chat, but I'll put in once again in case you would like it. Um, generally, the recordings are available within about a day. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, as we transition back, um, I want to invite and introduce our next artist. We have Bogdan Ahimescu, um, which again, I, I hope I'm properly pronouncing. Um, and I, I have to give a quick personal note. Um, Bogdan has been one of my phenomenal point people during, before and during the pandemic um, through my Fulbright. Um, he works as a professor and in many capacities, I believe, in the Fine Arts Academy here in Krakow, the Amateko Academy. Um, and as I introduce you, um, I'm sure you will be just as impressed as I am by his phenomenal, um, background and CV and experience. Um, so without further ado, I'll introduce um, Bogdan. And he was born in Romania, so he's a Polish Romanian. Um, and he also studied at the Academy of Fine Arts in Romania, in Cluj, if I'm pronouncing that properly. And he earned his diploma within the Faculty of Graphics of the Academy of Fine Arts here in Krakow at the Jan Mateko Academy. Um, his artistic practice includes drawing, photography, and installation. Um, his work explores different themes, including genetic inheritance, political dy um, dystopia, and more recently, imagery and with architecture and artifacts, as well as many others. Um, he represented Romania in the Venice Biennale in 2001 as part of the Context Network project. Um, his work is included in many collections in Poland and all over the world, including MoMA, Uffizi, and many more. Um, in addition, his didactic work is represented at art academies in Poland, um, including Krakow from 1992 to 93 and from 2000 until today, as well as in Romania and the United States, including in my home state um, at the University of Virginia. Um, from 1999 to 2000, 2002 to 2004, as well as the University of Arizona, and he lectures at over a dozen other universities. And you can find he has many individual exhibitions that span Europe, Asia, and America. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass the virtual floor to Bogdan. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you, thank you very much. I feel really well when I when I hear this whole enumeration because because I've been instrumentalizing it so many times, using it as a as a, as a bludgeon to bludgeon my way forward in in my career. These things sound impressive, but the 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 reality is that sometimes I feel like a dinosaur, and um, I'm going to try. I'm glancing at the clock. Uh, we don't have a lot of time, and I'm going to try to find a balance between actually saying something and continuing introducing myself. Um, uh, well, continuing what you just did, Joanna. And f well, first of all, I want to thank you uh, uh, for hosting uh, us, for hosting me in this event. It's it's been very interesting, and uh, I have to congratulate you again, uh, as I did before people logged in uh, for your resilience and uh, and uh, I, I think you know it's really your your events are very interesting and I'm, I'm glad to take part I also notice uh, among uh, the attendees uh, uh, Romanian poet and visual artist Dana Katona who whose mic is off but anyway we don't need to I, I I'm really happy that that uh, you're here and Polish designer uh, and curator Monika Bielak, fantastic. 
um, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can share a screen. And um, uh, Joanna, if you notice the names of the catalogs, please excuse me for calling them uh, uh, Pottle 01, Pottle 02. <laughs> Going, yeah. No worries. Okay, uh, let me see. I have like 25 minutes. F first of all, I just I just recommended myself as a dinosaur uh, a few seconds ago, and uh, true to the dinosaur uh, age, I am um, I am presenting now on the screen something that that is uh, both an instrumentary and sometimes a burden that I carry around, which is which is the long acquired, am, am I sharing my screen successfully? Is it visible? Yes, it looks great. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the skill of drawing is what, what has defined me as, as a visual artist. And I'm just, I'm just presenting really old work to, to situate you a little bit uh, in, in what I'm doing. Uh, these are drawings that I started doing back in 1991. This would be around the time when the first half of my life had elapsed, uh, that I lived in Romania and under dictatorship. And this second half, I uh, keep calling it a half, unfortunately, <laughs> time is passing and the, the proportion is, is but this is this is work that, that is done just about uh, the time, at the time of the first Gulf War. And, it, um, and it's done on um, using an instrumentary of, um, of uh, drawing, using the mania of drawing people, uh, using a, a certain skill set and an obsession, and under the pressure of of uh, the ideas that that while we are um, as artists vomiting shapes into the world, sometimes useless shapes, uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of people are being, uh, you know covered in the sand in, in, a, in, a, in a sense that's war. Well, the, uh, another thing that has to be said about this series is that they're ambidextrous uh, drawings uh, and they're done in the thousands. And uh, I'm going to stop this right here. Um, and for somebody who's been doing them all the time, I was at the time a person without a citizenship uh, be, uh, roaming uh, 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 between two countries in Europe and other countries that were uh, nice enough to <laughs> host me during scholarships and artists in residence. Th these these drawings were amassing in my luggage, and were posing posing more of a logistical problem to me than a than than, than an artistic one. I sometimes felt like a dictator that doesn't know what to do with the bodies. Killing is not a problem. <laughs> but disposing of the bodies is a problem. The composition as a discipline in, in art uh, was always foreign to me because I always wanted to gravitate towards more gravitas. So I was solving this problem through amassment. And uh, instead of composing uh, uh, these drawings, I would find ways, uh, you know, to, to, to just, uh, to, to, to just, juxtapose them and uh, uh, one image before you saw them uh, at the Cantor Museum and here they are at a public library in Regina in Canada and it it has been a form of art that 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 after this this many creations uh, uh, phase has entered into a sort of an exploitation phase and I'm this is another series made on coffee filters it's called Kukes Love Parade I'm, I'm showing you different installations of, uh, of it. The, another, another way uh, that over time I found to be more interesting of, um, of investing my, my uh, ease in, in drawing was um, of, to, to attach drawing to storytelling. And um, the, the images that you see here are uh, from a place, Porto Palermo in Albania. It's a deserted fisherman's hut on the beach. And these images are um, um, related to fic fictional anthropologies and, uh, and so on. Um, so just to continue this, this uh, sprint, um, uh, um, through uh, these works, I, 
I have now the same images, but but devoid of of their uh, of their materiality. Uh, the next images that I'm scrolling through here are not reproductions, but merely scans that have their their uh, substantial or bleached out to become black and white. They merely become information, and and this this brings me to 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 to, to my second way of of. Uh, of um, exploiting my drawing, which is uh, what I called performative lecture. Uh, the, all of these are videos, and um, uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to to let them play. Um, sensitive to the irony of showing a lecture during a lecture, but but <laughs> I'm just going to point out uh, that this this is a way of of um, of um, I don't know, consuming a, a, a life or the, or the information. The, the, a, a minute ago, you have seen a quite informal way of presenting it. This is a more uh, elaborate uh, way uh, where there was somebody typing uh, my story in the same time and the drawings were being created uh, um, as I was speaking. This is a quite old uh, work from 2009. And it, it relates to uh, uh, broadly to, to the idea of do it yourself in uh, Romania. They, uh, I, I sometimes do this as a solo act. Um, uh, this is a lecture uh, at the Transit Foundation in Bratislava. And uh, the essential part of, 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 of this part of work is that it allows me to uh, tell a story like, this is a story of throwing parties in the rector's office, getting drunk and dismantling a chandelier. But anyway, that's it's not the rocambolesque part that uh, that uh, I wanted to um, um, stress here. Uh, for uh, Dana Katona, perhaps you recognize this is Casa Matei. It's a it's a building in in Cluj, um, and. Hopefully uh, by now I have situated uh, um, uh, you in, 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 in what I'm doing. Uh, and now instead of, instead of continuing, I, I have material to continue this, this sort of self-presentation, but I, I wanted to, um, um, I wanted to continue with a concrete story. This is an image, a uh, photographic image not taken by me. Um, uh, from my uh, hometown of Timisoara, where the so-called Romanian Revolution of 1989 uh, has started. I don't know who um, remembers uh, it. It, 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 it. It feels a little bit like prehistory, but at the time it was considered to be the first televised uh, revolution. And um, um, I sorry to... to interrupt. I'm so sorry. We do. We just see the the portrait um, drawings at the moment. We don't see oh. another image. If if you're sharing that. Okay. Um, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, have you have you seen the videos I was referring to? Um, it, it was mostly just still images, um, which you referred yeah, to them being the stills, the stills from the images. Yeah. I've seen them. Yeah. Okay. So from from which point uh, you you haven't seen? Um, so we're we're looking at six still images of the scans um, of the drawings, mostly faces, okay. um, and the now, top left one is of some square hopefully, images. Hopefully they're gone now. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me re reshare uh, the screen and see if uh, this works better. How about this? Who knows how much? Uh... Uh, yes. Okay. So we see it um, as sort of a gallery view. Um, of so... Black and white photos and drawings. Yes. Hopefully. Okay. And one of them enlarged. Okay. Thank perfect. You, Joanna. Well, thank you, Joanna. No problem. So, you know, th this, this brings me to my story and hopefully the, 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 the screen hasn't changed now because I just put up a quote for myself that I wanted to, to, to read. I was pointed to a very interesting quote by Susan Sontag that, that I want to read to you. Uh, Photographs that everyone recognizes are now a constituent part of what society chooses to think about or declares that it has chosen to think about. 
it, the society, calls these ideas memories. And that is over the long run of fiction. Strictly speaking, there is no such thing as collective memory. Part of the same family of spurious notion as collective guilt. But there is collective instruction. All memory is individual and unreproductible. It dies with each person. What is called collective memory is not a remembering, but a stipulating that this is important and this is the story about how it happened with the picture that locks the story in our minds. Ideologies create substantiating archives of images, representative images, which encapsulate common ideas of significance and trigger predictable thoughts and feelings. And um, while I just told you that I'm going to, 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 to say a few words about the, 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 the Romanian revolution being the first televised event, uh, Susan Zontag's words are a, a very interesting example of or a very interesting comment of, of, on what happened. Uh, an entire planet knew what to think about this. And I am going to, to just run you over a, a series of drawings that, that refer roughly to a period of, uh, of, of the 80s and, and tell you a very short story uh, about each of them. And Joanna, please tell me now how many minutes do I still have? Um, it's flexible, maybe like 10, 15 or so. All right, so I'm gonna try and, uh, and, and be quick. This is a schematic of how to become a student of, uh, at the Art Academy uh, back in the 80s. Uh, having to make sketches of, of characters, and these are the times. Uh, these are static and dynamic compositions, so you can make uh, socialist, realist type of imagery. When training to, to, to draw these, it was useful to have a clock to ring and make you work fast enough. Um, whether it was necessary to make a, a, a fight scene or a, a, a production scene in a factory, you would just change the tools on imagery that you learned by heart. Um, these here are three subsequent images of uh, uh, cheating with grades by the by professors who wanted to help certain people it was enough to to change the angle on the stamp and the rest of the commission knew to give better grades to this particular work um, this is a this is a schematic of um, of the hierarchical pyramid of functions in, uh, uh, in an art academy where there is a parallel structure uh, introduced by the Communist Party where the party secretary was just a little bit above the rector in their decision making. The, the HR person who was also a secret police operative was stronger than any of the deans and the janitors and the models were very, uh, had had a lot of uh, leverage. I know it sounds crazy, but this is the the the, the way it was. Uh, I'm going to run really quickly and maybe stop on one of, on one of these uh, of these uh, images. Okay, here let's stop on this one. This is uh, it's December twenty. This December December eighteen, nineteen eighty nine, and um, I am walking on a street in um, um, my hometown and being conditioned to join any queue that was queuing for anything because maybe there was something useful to obtain there. I joined a queue that was queuing to enter a certain building, much to my surprise because there was no, um, there was no um, store there that would sell anything. Uh, and let me just jump to the, to the image that I have to jump to. Uh, 
after 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 entering the building, the queue continued and was moving slowly up to the first uh, uh, floor and then to the second floor, and finally to the, to a small uh, window that was showing the image of the back back courtyard of an army unit, and uh, there were trucks loaded with soldiers. Um, ready to go there, locked themselves by a, by a high uh, metal structure, like what you have around baseball or, or tennis fields to, to, to catch the balls from running away. And there were uh, loudspeakers around them that were monotonously flooding them with the um, um, repetitive phrases which were describing the city as if it would have been invaded by zombies that they were saying there are many hooligans and foreign agents on the streets uh, they want to change our way of life they are, they are paid by foreign entities uh, they want to destroy our land you will defend us and so on so in, in essence I was standing in a queue by civilians that were looking through the uh, through a window to see the soldiers uh, that as they were indoctrinating indoctrinated to to shoot us. Um, it's a little bit hard for me to to continue this without any feedback. So um, I'm going to to treat the rest of the presentation for a few seconds as a menu and you stop me or somebody in the chat and tell me which image I am to uh, tell you a story about. The man crawling under neon lights in the midnight near an underground passage. The American journalist with uh, the inscription TV duct taped to their car. The talented boxer idiot the guy waving a flag with a hole out of a fiat window, the Neanderthalians chasing the poster makers. Let's stop it here. Joanna, you have yeah. your back on, so if you yes. want. You can. So um, I'm gonna, I put my comment in the chat as well, but our first one is to look at the talented boxer. Mm, all right. Um, the talented boxer was an idiot. <laughs> well, um, art uh, art uh, studies were were um, ex under extreme assault by by people to get in, especially by male students, because unless you have you became a student of um, uh, a university, you got drafted for a long period of time in a very unpleasant. Uh, Romanian army. I, I ended up by not escaping this, but that's a, another story in itself. However, uh, this pressure meant that not necessarily the most mature and talented people were accepted at the, at the entrance exam. The percentage of, of uh, uh, success was very low. Typical typical um, number of, uh, of people wanted to wanting to get in were at around I know about 160, 200 people for uh, 10, 12, 15 places. So it was a success ratio of under uh, one to 10. Um, it was also a given that, uh, that the actual uh, contest, while on, on the outside you were supposed to submit works, the actual contest was between um, um, the, the strength of your parents, like how much, how much clout they had. So there were basically a few av possible avenues. Either you're looking at my colleagues, for instance, either you were a police informant yourself and therefore your presence in the art academy was desirable, or your parents were securitate officers or they were artists. Um, in the case of the talented boxer idiot, his, his, his father was a, a 
painter and um, <laughs> the, the talented boxer uh, idiot uh, slid through five years of, of, uh, of education but his presence there was a very interesting, interesting for me counterbalance for the type of education we were subjected to because because we were trained a little bit like like Chinese ballerinas in the in the art of, of drawing correctly, while this guy feeling that he's being he's untouchable, uh, he was making all kinds of uh, you know for us completely crazy things. So in 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 retrospect. The quality of being inspirational uh, is is a rel very relative thing, and I have, I there's a reason why I don't have here um, uh, an image of anyone that was that was uh, um, doing uh, so quote unquote correct work, but the people who influenced me uh, were paradoxically, you know, mediocre artists. Um, um, we also have one from Alexandra. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce the first part. Neandra Italians chasing. Mm, if I'm saying that properly. Yeah, let me see where where did I get this from. Uh, yeah, it's it's from yeah. from this image. What you have to know is that um, uh, I, uh, I I was a student of of printmaking. Uh, printmaking, uh, which at some point was an art and now it quickly is degenerating into a uh, sort of a hobby, um, uh, has, as you all know, very rich political traditions and, and an aura of opposition attached to it uh, from the likes of Kete Korvitz and Badlach to speak of Germans. Uh, only uh, uh, individuals uh, uh, creating prints were very often, you know, politically um, aware. It was not different in Cluj, where, where where students in the printmaking department of the of the academy uh, were more politically aware than others. It, there's also a past uh, methodologically attached uh, to uh, to printmaking, where where multiplication of of printed matter. Um, Luther can can attest to that uh, was always a strong political tool, and this idea was not lost to uh, the pigs in power. It's it's it is never lost to the pigs in power actually, and the, the, the in in this case, um, uh, what what I'm showing you here is a, is a intaglio press, uh, and the press is locked with a bike lock. And here is the, the hand of uh, one of my former teachers with a mirror. You were getting the lock to the presses downstairs, uh, but before he had to check your zinc plates with a mirror. Why? Because the print is reversed. So, so the idea was not only that no, that no inscription transpires there, but, but that, that the mirror will help this, uh, th this teacher to discover whether there is not even the slightest allu political allusion in your stuff. So when when the system crumbled, like it's in, it's enough that enough people protest, and then there's so much work shooting the ones who do that there's no more time to deal with everybody. And when there are many many things happening in the same time, you know these this this this, uh, this uh, printing uh, process flourished. And here uh, you see uh, uh, not very recognizable, but uh, but the silhouette of Carolina Bank, my friend from Cluj, being pulled by the hand towards the, the car of uh, Shoni Patatich, uh, getting ready to speed away. It was very exotic to own a car at the time. And the, the Neanderthalians are, are, are the workers coming out from the night shift from the factory. Uh, the, the, the workers already then, um, were counterintuitively uh, the most right-wing force and the most anti-democratic force in, uh, in, in society. And uh, uh, what this guy is tearing here 
is a is a silk screen poster that we were putting and 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 the other guys were trying to beat the to beat the my colleagues um, uh, putting it up in, in in essence after that that censorship that i was describing to you a minute ago had, had elapsed we thought that we will be able to express ourselves and stupidly we started to put posters on the street only to discover that the um people themselves took upon themselves uh, this function with with greater brutality like anything that was alternative to 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 the to what they perceived as normality uh, had to be punished silenced and so on i don't know whether this whether this answers the question um we sort of we sort of moved flexibly into the into the q and a um, uh, uh, we did. That was like a seamless transition. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually would love to hear more about. Um, is it the American journalist one? I'm obviously biased as yeah. someone from the U.S. I'm curious. Well, um, um, this this is another case of, um, of 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 personal memory that will die with me, according to Susan uh, Zontag's. Um, uh definition and uh, it is an image connected with both this one and this one if you notice this frame like structure here is the same frame like structure here is the entrance from a from a underground passage in front of the opera house in my hometown and here it is pictured that during the daytime um with tanks guarding it, which generated the, 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 the regular syrupy um, um, official narrative, uh, uh, TV narrative, the, uh, the army is with the people and blah, blah, blah. Um, the, same, the same place at night, uh, I was observing it. These are, these are my own observations through the windows of, uh, of the apartment of the Vreme family in the in multi-generation family of artists in the city of Timisoara um, uh, on the Republici, the Republic Boulevard. <laughs> so quite smack in the center of the city. And this guy is, uh, uh, is a wounded person, uh, absolutely no way of getting and helping him there without getting killed that I saw like really, really, really slowly crawling I have no idea where he was crawling or, or whether he ever get, got there. Simply standing in the window was a bad idea. However, late in the, late in the night, um, I, I heard engines, the silence being so profound that, 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 that even a, a relatively modern car by those standards, like this is 89, right? And we are in a country where most of the cars are rickety, you know, wrecks. Uh, so, so I, I saw two evidently foreign cars slowly um, uh, driving around the, the corner with the, with the um, inscription TV, uh, mask taped, not duct tape, but mask taped on the on on the um, on the hoods, and uh, this. This, this would be a period where there was a lot of chaos in the city and the, probably the hope with plastering the, that would be not to get shot or something like that. Um, it, indeed, from the same vantage point, I had seen during the same time uh, um, a, a, a couple of surprisingly overweight uh, Tanyug uh, agency reporters running while they were sh was shooting, I was like completely mesmerized that they had the um, they had the um, courage of actually going out. We were in the room, um, like getting closer and further from the window, uh, depending on if the shooting was intensifying or not, not to get ricochets or something. But this was in a quiet moment in the dead of night, and these cars made a made a left turn pictured here, and this would be like the last. I don't know, 30, 40 seconds of life of uh, some people in these cars. They, 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 they were shot at immediately. And uh, uh, of course, later it was said that they were shot by terrorists or communists or 
they were completely shot by the army. It was, I, I, I saw it, it was completely clear who shot at them. Uh, and the, the car uh, in the back that says TV reversed sideways at an amazing speed and probably was missed by, uh, by, by subsequent shots and nothing happened. The first one uh, drove through a store window and lodged itself in a, in a, in a room. But the, the interesting thing is that, that, that being, we, we, it, it just so happened that we, we visited our friends and we were blocked there for a few days, not being able to move. But the interesting thing is how many fascinating things you can see even being uh, such a coward looking through the, through, through the window from a very limited uh, vantage point and how later the story is completely flattened uh, by, uh, um, uh, I, for instance, I don't even know if this journalist was American. I'm, I, it might be the case that he was French. I have no idea, but, but that's what I heard after, afterwards. So, yeah. <laughs> That's the story. Well, thank you, though. I'm, I'm very impressed and amazed by the vivid way that you remember each and every moment. Um, and I just have a couple of like preliminary questions about the proximity and the time between when this event took place and you f physically witnessed these and when you put them on paper and how and how your memory or I don't know if you had a camera or you were able to photograph them. Um, what that process and timeline looked like. Well, that's an excellent question, and thank you because it's 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 the crucial question for these drawings. These drawings are are uh, I call them event photography, and the um, the the title has uh, has an irony to itself. And the irony is that that uh, they were drawn ex post. They were not drawn during what was happening, and. Uh, um, the thing is, I have no photos from from that period, being that I was either too busy, or um, or um, too afraid to take photos. And um, being afraid was was the conditioning of uh, you, you know. But but whether, whether these were they photographing any of, of, of this would um, would have made any sense or would have helped? I have no idea. Uh, but but I also I also know and I also I, I I've gathered secondhand knowledge for from um, a fellow by the name of uh, Malcolm Gladwell I don't know if you know he has he has interesting podcasts among others on memory is is like memory plays amazing tricks on us and uh, but these <clears throat> uh, I started doing these drawings uh, about eight, nine years after the events. But, you know, some of them, um, I, I remember in, 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 in extreme detail, some of them not. The, 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 the interesting thing is that, that what I, for me is that these things sound as, they, as they're dramatic, but they, they're not that dramatic. Like they, they, they're, they're interesting, but they're not dramatic. <laughs> there's there's many people dying of of uh, of uh, cancer ulcer and who knows what else uh, uh, and some of them might be journalists <laughs> and we we're not doing drawings and th there's always something funny like you know um, the the writing here is done with the letter these elements here for those who don't know they're called serifs is um, uh, uh, fonts that have that have these terminations, that the, the, there's a history behind those, like Times New Roman have serifs, and the ones that don't have serifs, sometimes they're called sans serif, if they're a variation of a font. And this is a, this is a very funny moment. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a big slogan saying, down with the president. And there's a cop in the middle of the night, he walked to, this is in, in the center of Cluj, and he walked to me and it, it was quite funnily visible that he is flabbergasted by, by, by this change of situation. Like he's not supposed to be beating me anymore. So what, what is he going to do? So, so he, he, he stroked a conversation with me and he said he was amazed that, <laughs> that I can draw letters like this. So I had a conversation about 
about font construction with him, about serifs, kerning, uh, single elements and double elements font. And he was nodding his head. I don't think he understood anything, but, but it, was, it was interesting how, how, how talking about form in art had uh, suddenly be become something that, that, that he not only was listening, but he was too shy to interrupt. Like, had, had it be a different context, uh, he would have probably clubbed me just for even having the tools <laughs> to, to write a sign. But the context changed and this shyness kicked in back. And, you know, he was just the, the again, the, the, the regular country boy that wanted social advance and became a cop. And <laughs> That's was so interesting. Wow. So. And is that the only one that you are depicted in the drawing as well? No. Well, I'm showing you a, a small selection uh, here. Uh, let me see. Um, um, uh, no, for instance, uh, this is uh, me washing uh, zinc plates in the um, courtyard of the academy. It's 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 another story. Uh, these are my hands silk screening mm. uh, with primitive methods. Uh, this is a <laughs> this is a this is a, an informal manual of silk screening on the cheap. Uh, that's a lamp. That's me holding the uh, the distance between the knee and the and the bare foot. Plus the the timepiece here gives you the intensity of, of exposure. The room has to be empty. Uh, there were there was a huge supply of of thick books about Marxism, Leninism. So mm -hmm. if you wrapped those in a blanket, you could use them as a, as a pusher from behind the, the silk screen, and then and then if you took your shoes off, then you could use just the points of your toes. <laughs> to keep a, a sheet of glass um, um, you know, balanced. So yeah, that's uh, speaking of depictions of, of me. Uh, may, maybe there, there might be more uh, here, but uh, yeah, th this is, um, yeah, maybe this, this, this is me as well in a jacket that I have, a down jacket that I have sewn myself, putting posters up. The, the interesting thing about the 80s in Romania is that after such a long period of censorship, any declaration is, is listened to, but for a very brief moment of time. So the, so, so the poster that I, I don't know if clumsily or not, I, I drew here, like in the moment of, of unwrapping it, like, like I was pushing it from down to up, and people yeah. were starting to stop before it was actually flat on the wall because they wanted to know what it says. Uh, this is on the windows of the university library in uh, Cluj. Wow, yeah, you can see that even though there isn't a lot of detail and information, like you give us just enough that we can sort of put those pieces together. Um, and we also, we have a great question in the chat from um, Monica. Um, so I don't know if you wanna, um, ask this yourself, but I can also read it out. Um, I'll go ahead and just read it. And if you want to elaborate, um, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, it says, are your stories belonging only to the past? Mm, uh, no, no. And, you know, I've chosen my, um, I've chosen my material here. Let, let me just show you something. Um, and thank you for that question, by the way. Anything that that uh, so uh, it was a great question, and I love we get to see. I don't know if this is your working studio space, but it's fascinating. Look, um, I, I I just I think I just uh, <laughs> I have a file not found, but but if we switch to camera for a second, how do I get rid of uh, screen sharing here? 
Oh, it, it did get rid. Do you, see, you see me, right? Uh, no. We still see your screen. At the bottom of the Zoom application, there should be an option to stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. Did I Great. stop sharing? Yes. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, my, my, my drawing, my drawing mania continues and I don't know whether this is not too dark, but, um, oh, yeah, we can see it. There's a, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of drawings here, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're pretty much, they're pretty much everywhere. Mm -hmm. And in some way they, uh, they do refer to the future. And uh, Dana, uh, if you if you are uh, listening, you're going to recognize this image because I've posted it in a in a show us your your pandemic studio uh, <laughs> show. But but the, the the drawings the drawings that you just saw are uh, each of them is accompanied by a text mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, let me instead of flicking through all of through 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 all of them, I can I can just I can just show you. And the the texts are about the future. They they are about a post human future where our bodies will be commodified, modified, uh, altered, abandoned. Uh, devalued and so on in ways that we cannot think about now so so each drawing you, you know corresponds to some there's a there's a human dog here corresponds to some sort of mutation or dismemberment or so and the texts are really poems about about uh about the future and about uh, about the possibility unfortunately they were in polish and i'm not sure whether uh they um um they um whether i can translate but let me try about this okay. dog that <laughs> would be it. great actually yeah i know sometimes it, things aren't uh, quite translatable says dear zelda i have a full skill set and there's nothing i can do about it such were the times when i was designed so i have very little leaves on me please don't consider me uh, to be a stiff character i'm just composed of these things and not of other things and just for balance i'm, I'm going to read another one um, how do you say in english this uh, in polish it's salomonowe rozwiązanie it's like the wisdom of the king salomon who who proposed cutting a, a yeah a, from the biblical text yeah, yeah, yeah. king solomon i think uh, king solomon's uh, solutions repeated uh, uh, many times all the way to the atoms cannot be uh, applied to me because i am not constructed of um, particles just of doubts and that's and and that's uh, oh that's interesting it makes me think about that phrase like or the i think it's a poem of like these tangled webs we mortals weave a little bit that imagery makes me think about that a little bit too the, the, i'm i'm really grateful for the question because because um, like it makes me want to work mm -hmm. because indeed um, you know celebrating the past is something that we are very good at doing, especially in Poland, even more mm. than in Romania. Romania lives in a different dimension, maybe. But mm. uh, but um, yeah, I'm I'm very much interested, uh, and this interest has a form of concern sometimes uh, about the future. The future has its own dystopias, and and so, and and because of my mania with technology, I'm unfortunately very aware of what is happening and will be happening with us, to us, and through us. Yeah, I think um, we've kind of touched on this, but one question I had was, how do you see that your work continues to be relevant or continues to challenge um, years or decades or however long since they originated? Because I think there is incredible relevance, but I'm curious as to how you perceive that or if you would agree with that. Well, I mean, if... Um... 
Mm, if I can reshare my my uh, my screen for a second. Um, Oh, oh, file not found. Okay, I don't. I, that, well, we see images. It looks like projections and people uh, sitting by the projections. Um, yeah, um, I, I disconnected the disks. Too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Look, I don't know because because I have been creating um, a, a little bit outside time. I know it's it can be a problem sometimes, but. Uh, Okay, I, I, I'm trying to say too many things at a, at a time now. From a strictly professional standpoint, um, teaching at the uh, at the art academy provides me with some something like um, a lifelong grant, uh, being a tenured position, and all. It, it has its own comf comforts. Uh, some some people say that that like some sea animals, as soon as teachers get tenure. They start to do what sea urchins do. They start digesting their own brains. And of course, there's a certain danger in, in, in that. But there's another, there's another uh, interesting thing about comfort is that there's a certain pressure. And in the US, you know more than me about this in the art market and art life to be continuously productive and, and, and to be on the spot. We are all aware of the list of, of, uh, of, uh, of the compulsory topics, right? So there was the year of transhumanism. Then there was the year of, so there you had to wear those pants. Well, uh, I feel many times that I'm outside time. So for me, uh, the, 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 the question of relevance, um, I don't know, I don't care. I mean, and, and it seems to work. What I was wanting to show you was was a was a lecture with um, the Colgate University in, in upstate New York uh, two years ago that I had a hard time stopping. Like there was so much interest, and and what is interesting to me is that most of the students that were there were um, um, interested in politics um, or history, and th therefore. Uh, you know, I, I feel well in, 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 in such company, whether, whether my works are going to, to function that, <laughs> that I don't know or whether they're going to keep relevant. I sometimes think, like, certainly our, my skill set is, is uh, not something that reproduces that well socially uh, recently. I'm glad to have it, but, but not many people uh, aspire to... to, to it. It's not that necessary, maybe anymore. Right, and um, sort of one related question um, as we sort of transition to concluding um, is, I'm always curious. Like similarly in the previous um, Q and A, is just to hear kind of what your experience has been in the last year and a half, um, and as we transition out of the pandemic. But in addition, if you would have any advice or any thoughts to fellow artists emerging or professional as they navigate this unique time, sort of any thoughts about your experience there as well? Well, um, perhaps, perhaps uh, what uh, best exemplifies, um, you know, a way to, uh, a, a way to, to deal with, uh, with uh, this situation to, to me, um, am I did, did I did I share anything? No, perhaps not. Uh, was I took part in a in a in a project called Pierre and Mai. Um, okay, this is not going to work anymore. Um, you know, taking pleasure in the arts is is um, an incredible, um, powerful fallback strategy like it's if you like doing what you're doing then nothing else really matters i mean we're going to be dead before this planet is going to be incinerated and you, you know I, I i don't mean to sound like fatalistic but there was a interesting work in one of the venice biennials uh 
which uh, listed the names of artists uh, shown um, in a certain pavilion. I don't even remember. And you, you didn't recognize, you, you know, maybe maybe two percent of these names. Uh, like like all all is illusion, right? So let's have some fun. That's that that that's my my thought on it. I had immense pleasure in taking part in, in this project Piesce Mai because I'm as you noticed from my the beginnings of my presentation. I'm a grateful maniac. I love to draw and. Um, seldom but still it does happen to me to draw together with my kids we drew a bunch of animals and there when there was a total curfew in Kaku and the lights were uh, off starting with midnight in the entire city Joanna I perhaps remember that which was really strange the city was dark like a cave uh, so we had these two really strong Epson wide angle projectors and I edited a, a, a film with all these animals and I was projecting them on the street I live on. So, so there was this procession of white phosphorescent animals, you know, in front of my house as if they would be moving in from the forest, which is uh, uh, west of me and not so far in back into the city. And, and this, was a, this was a way of, uh, this was really work for nobody. Like uh, it was done uh, on the occasion of a first of May uh, event, but but I think it was seen uh, by four or five people, and it doesn't matter really. So you know, it made me happy. <laughs> that's that's it. Well, that's a wonderful note um, to kind of conclude our event. Um, but I also want to sort of conclude with. Um, I wrote down something you said earlier, which I thought was really interesting. Um, oh, the connection of attaching drawing to storytelling. And I think that's a really powerful notion. And I think storytelling is becoming more and more um, popular, I think, in a lot of different genres of our contemporary mm -hmm. physical and cultural landscape. Um, so I think that's something that's a universal value and a universal concept. and. I think it's becoming more and more used and more and more normalized. Um, and it, it's such a wonderful way of connecting people no matter what our differences and proximity and so forth. Um, but I wanna open it up if anyone has any final questions or comments um, before we officially conclude. Um, otherwise, um, thank you so much Bogdan for such an amazing talk um, for the Q&A. Um, it was such a pleasure to have both of you here today. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, Monica. Thank, thank you so you, much. Uh, thank you, Marta. Thank you, once in seven, five, seven, seven, five. <laughs> yes, thank you. And I've already had many inquiries from multiple thank platforms about the awesome. recording. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, just saying it was out. It was very nice, very, very nice. Extended <laughs> and uh, brought uh, other language, I think, to like when you said, all is illusion, let's have some fun. It rang so true to me and other things you said. So thank you so much. Sorry for not turning my camera on and my, my phone now, but thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, and once again, the recording will be made available on our YouTube channel. I've posted links in the chat. You're also, you have the possibility to save the chat if you would like. Um, if you go to the chat icon, there's an option for file. And if you go to the right, there's three dots and there's an option to save chat. Um, that might be the easiest way to save all those links, all that information. Um, otherwise, you can go to my website, joannapottle.com. There's a whole page about the project, the Solidarity Project, with the YouTube channel link, Instagram. Um, all of our events are there. Um, so check out the recording in about a day or so, and we'll be announcing that, of course. Um, but have a wonderful rest of your day and Saturday, wherever you might be, uh, whatever time zone you're at. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join us, um, and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Dziękuję bardzo. All right. Happy Saturday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Thanks.